Tony, another week off. Did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, certainly uh, in some respects, but you know, you much prefer to be part of big games like we, we saw on the weekend. So, uh, uh, But in terms of uh, freshening the players up and, and getting ready for um, the remainder of the season, yeah, the, it, it'll have its um, advantages, I think. Now, you know firsthand what Wigan have been going through this weekend because you've done it yourself the last two years on the bounce. Warrington came from the Challenge Cup a bit deflated, didn't perform well in the playoffs. Do you think it could have any impact on Wigan ahead of this weekend's game? Uh, well, there's two different questions there because uh, the following week after the Challenge Cup last year, we went back down to London and played Harlequins and put in a good performance. I think the week afterwards, uh, immediately afterwards, uh, I think you're able to dig deep and you realise that it's... You know you, that you've done things a bit differently, and you know your preparation probably isn't as great. So you can dig deep and go out there and, and put in a performance. It was the weeks after that that we found most difficult, but um, that was only our experience. Um, each and every team can be different, and you know the fact that they had some experience from the final series from last year um, may put them in a different sort of position. But uh, we felt emotionally and and physically, I suppose, uh, flat after that. It wasn't the, the following week, it was the, the weeks after that that we found it difficult, particularly when teams had had a break and were fresh and were coming at us, and uh, we just didn't lift to this to what we would have liked to. We would have loved to have had another chance, you know, seeing if we'd learnt some lessons or if we were able to cope with that, but uh, hopefully that'll uh, uh, we'll get a chance to do that next year. How important is it for you for Warrington to finish top of the league? It'd be nice. Uh, it'd be nice. Yeah, it'd be nice for the club and it'd be nice recognition um, of uh, what has been a pretty good season so far. And uh, but you know, and, and it'll be nice for the fans and uh, bragging rights and all that sort of things. So, um, uh, whether it, I don't think it's a make or break um, as to you know increasing either team's chances, whoever comes first or second. You know we. Uh, to get home ties in the finals is a good thing, and uh, you know it, it's the same for both whoever comes first or second. So it'll be nice, um, be a nice reward for the players and in the club and and the fans. But um, like I always say, uh, you'll finish where you deserve to, and um, you know if we manage to do that, well that's great. And if we, if we don't, well you know uh, we've still had a pretty good season so far. In a lot of competitions, finishing top of the league normally indicates you're the best team in that competition. In in the Super League, a lot more focus goes on winning the grand final. Yeah, yeah, for sure, um, definitely. Um, you know, it's different. So you know, uh, you can't claim to be the best team. Um, you know, throughout the season uh, entirely, what it shows is uh, consistency. You know, and uh, but there's so many variables within the competition as well, and the strength of the competition, and when you get certain teams at what times, and all that sort of stuff. What the final show is, you know, who the final series shows who can handle it at under pressure. You know, and it it does become more pressure within uh, the final series, and it's the best of the best teams. You know, so um, yeah, and, and and I suppose it depends on. You know the culture that you brought up in as well in terms of whether that how comfortable that sits with people. Um, you know a lot of English because of the football tradition. It's first first across the line and all that sort of stuff. When you come from um, other parts of the world, like as I have, um, you know it's natural for the grand final to be the prestigious um, part of the season. So, but you know it's it uh, it'll be nice to finish first. But if we if we can, we'll certainly try hard. And if we can't, well. Um, we'll certainly go on to, to try and compete in the, the final series as best we can. It doesn't get much more than a title decider this game against Wigan. One point between the two teams, only one game left after it. Are you treating it any differently to any other game? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, our, our ethos and our, what, what we try to uh, produce here at, at Warrington and within the team is to go out and do your best each and every game. and. And uh, the game that's in front of you is the most important of the year. And uh, uh, I can't ask the players to try any harder than their hardest. And, you know, the week before and the week before that, and that's all we asked. And we try to 
prepare the best we can each and every week. So um, uh, if there's something that you can do that's better than doing your best, uh, I'm, I haven't come across it yet. So no, um, we'll approach it in the same way as, as we always do. Listen, we understand the interest in the game and we understand that uh, the outcome of the game can can have a uh, uh, make a make a decisive uh, re result for for the competition. Um, we understand all that, but it's still a game of rugby league, and you've got to go out there and tackle well and pass well and execute well. And if you do that, you give yourself a chance of winning. If you don't, you know there's no chance of winning. So uh, we'll concentrate on the little things like we always do. What's the health of the squad going into this game? I mean, there's been some key players missing. Morley's been out a long time now. Yep. Hodgson, um, Grix. Yep. And Westwood. A, Westwood. Thank you. <laughs> What's the state of play with their injuries? Uh, yeah, Benny's still in his brace uh, for his knee. He, you know, we'd like to think that we'll see him before the end of the season if we can play long enough. So uh, he keeps repairing. Uh, Moza. He's steady away, um, and sim when he's symptom free, you know he can resume. Or, or if, unless we can find a uh, a way of repairing his his damage, um, so we're still investigating every avenue there. But you know we're just remaining patient for him, and uh, no pressure on Moz in that respect. Uh, Simon is a fair chance of um, being available this week. We'll we'll have a look at him Friday. Um, Brett, a bit the same. Um, we'll have a look at him Friday and make a decision. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, Dave Solomono, who's under suspension and injury. He had a fracture. He's got a fracture in his finger and uh, probably couldn't have, probably wouldn't have played in this game anyway this week. Um, but on, on top of that, um, he's had a ban, so that was uh, taken out of our hands. And so that's probably the present state of. Affairs. Um, but we've got a, a good and healthy um, depth in our squad and uh, we'll put out a pretty competitive team this week. Have you done any extra preparation for it with having the weekend off or did you give the lads time away? Uh, we had three days off uh, when we came back from the Catalans um, game. It was a tough and draining game uh, in tough conditions. Uh, we played in 34, 35 degrees heat um, down there. It was very draining um, for the players. Uh, and so they had uh, three days after that, uh, immediately after that, as a break and then um, back into training as, as per normal. So, um, yeah, no, we've had a, a, a good build-up and a, and a steady build-up in, uh, in terms of uh, we'll, we have been building it up as it gets closer. Look, we've talked about the complexities of the playoffs before. Do, do the players understand the whole competition, the way it runs now? Because I know a lot of supporters are always asking, how does it work? Who plays who? Oh, yeah. yeah it is no. very confusing, isn't it? Yeah, it probably, there's probably systems that are easier than I'm, uh, I've seen. But, uh, yeah, no, the players know. But, you know, it, the players don't look too far ahead on, on those sort of issues. And, uh, you know, back to... Whoever's in front of you, that's and whoever your opponent is each and every week. That's who you you got to go out there and perform against. So um, you know, I understand uh, what you're saying, and you know maybe that's um, your next brief is to sit down and uh, and uh, explain it to everybody in, in no uncertain terms and, and educate yourself at the same. I've time. already educated myself, tell oh, me. <laughs> I understand good. it now. Good. I mean, if you get to the stage where you have to select a team to play, how would you feel about that? Because it sort of sends out a bit of a message to that team that you think they're the easier team to beat. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that rule. Um, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'd probably leave it up to the club um, in terms of commercial gain rather than I don't care, really care who you play against uh, each and every week. And, uh, you know, if there was some uh, commercial benefit for the that game, I suppose that would be the only way. Otherwise, I'd, I'd just play who were, whoever we were due to play regardless of of, uh, of choice. Um, so, uh, yeah, I haven't really discussed it with the club at this stage, and uh, but that's probably how I'd... I'd go about it, but uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of, of that as a rule, and you know, I certainly wouldn't be uh, exercising my right of choosing between one team or the other. So uh, I'd just uh, go as as it was uh, planned, I would say. 
Oh well, let's hope it becomes a topic of conversation. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, that'd be nice, but uh, you know, we'll, as I always say, we'll we'll end up um, finishing where we deserve to. You know, um, it's all the table is about you know your whole season, and uh, it very rarely lies as to where you should and deserve to be. Um, right at this point in time. Uh, We've, we've won more games than anybody in the season. Um, unfortunately, there's a team that's lost fewer games than us. And, um, you know, it's it's come down to, you know, the uh, last couple of weeks, which I think adds some intrigue about that part of the, the season and in that part of the league. Um, it's certainly been very competitive at the top. And it's always good to have destiny in your own hands. Yeah, yeah, that's good too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But, uh, you know... Uh, regardless of you know whether we finish first or second, um, you know we've made progression and we're progressing as a club on and off the field. And uh, you know it's nice to be involved in a and with a uh, team in a club like that. And um, you know we want to keep doing that over the next you know few years and get stronger and stronger. But uh, you know from where we've come from from last year, we've, we've made a lot of progression and we've been a lot more consistent and. You know, we've still had some ups and downs, but, you know, our uh, downs haven't been as often as the ups, and that's always a good thing. Do you ever look back and think, what if, some of those games that we lost there in the no, season? No, never. No, no, never, never. There's always good reason for it, and we always learn from it. And, um, you know, some of the, the adversities that you go through make you a stronger and better team, person, and club, you know, and you learn lessons from it. But, no, I'm not a... A regretful person or somebody who looks over their shoulder you learn lessons along the way and you you take lessons from it but even when the bad things happen in your life uh, you know you, you you get stronger from it and you, you progress from it and you learn from it and uh, so often they're not all that bad okay Tony as always thank you for your time and good luck at the weekend my pleasure